Hi, good evening and welcome to Life is Too Short. Um, every Wednesday at seven o'clock um, and we're very, very pleased tonight to introduce um, a newcomer tonight from London and uh, her name is Louise Penn. Welcome Louise, Hello. so happy to meet you. And so delighted uh, we have this week Leslie Trainer. So we're, you know, people may pop into our waiting room um, and, and come come and join us, but we'll just we'll just enjoy ourselves anyway, because we'll we'll be reading and chatting and talking. Um, but you can you still have time to join up until uh, eight o'clock uh, tonight if you want to pop in and read a, a poem. You're most welcome. Here beside me is Blair Blair Ritchie, and. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, so he, he has a couple of poems, up, don't you, from the book, from that book. Yeah. We, we found this book and it was called, uh, it's, it's actually by a nun, it's Sister Wendy Beckett. And it's quite fascinating, I don't know if you've read this book, quite fascinating. She has chosen, like we're doing partly tonight, um, she has chosen so many fine poets. So it's really quite interesting what a nun, you know, Sister Hen Wendy Beck Beck has has chosen. So you'll read a couple later. Yeah, that's great. Um, so um, so tonight um, I am going to read um, a, a, um, an, again just a, a slight ex extra extract from um, the Edinburgh Fringe, the Edinburgh Fringe in a nutshell. But basically, I read a little bit of, of this last week. What I'd like to do is um, talk about Paul Eccentric's new book that's coming out in October. Now, this is another thing with the pandemic. Um, in terms of, you know, about book launches, we can see at the Edinburgh International Book Festival how well they have, have done this. I don't know, Lise, have you, um, ha have you been online? To see anything in the Edinburgh International Book Festival? Oh, so, yeah. I've seen a lot of the theatre shows um, yeah. that have been on for the Edinburgh Fringe, but not for the book side. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, they, like, like the Edinburgh Fringe, um, thankfully there is something online. It's never the same, but at least, you know, we have something. And the Edinburgh International Book Festival has been extraordinary, I have to say. Um, you know, you just click, click, click on and see this phenomenal uh, writers um, that we probably wouldn't have the opportunity to see. You can see as many as you want <laughs> in, a, in one day. You still have a chance. Edinburgh International Book Festival, if you click in, you might see uh, someone that, you, you, you know, you, you, you can enjoy. Um, now, we were talking about the Edinburgh International Book Festival the experiences we've had where, where Leslie and I went, we had quite a, quite a good laugh. <laughs> um, and actually this book, I'm um, going to read Women, uh, Women with Serious Words. <laughs> I had that at the top of the pile. And I thought, how come we've never read anything from that? Well, I'm reading... You know, I, I'm sure I've got a copy about here. Um, I could read Throne as well. Yeah, it, oh, that would be amazing. Because the thing is, um, Women with Furious Words, we did in August 2016, this is relevant to the theme tonight about the Edinburgh Fringe, because we, outside of the Scottish Poetry Library, um, Leslie maybe will explain, um, and, um, you know, it says it here, to be honest, I can read it out from here, in 2016, on the first day of the 2016 Edinburgh Fringe, 15 women gathered in front of the Scottish Poetry Library in Crichton's Lane in the heart of the Canning Gate of Edinburgh. They had answered a call to come and perform their poetry on the street, share their words, especially their fierce words. This was to be a word that empowered them or others. They were invited to read, read it onto an artist's canvas and sign it, produce a work of art. Words were the art. Something powerful was born that day. For some, it was the first time they had shared their work to anyone. For others, the first time they had read their work on a street, especially during the Edinburgh Fringe. But what all found liberating was there was no spoken word or 
organizer, sensing what they could be said. Here was a group of women reflecting on their lives, on their terms. A woman with fierce words was born. <laughs> By Leslie Trader. So, um, <laughs> you know, it is very, very a momentous it's nearly, day. Because it's nearly, nearly the end of August. And so I think it was subconsciously that was on the top of the pile. Honestly, I just, I just picked it. it was, so, we're going to read, if, if that's okay, Leslie, if, if you could please read mm. more at some point, that will. would be sensational. Um, right, so um, I'm going to read a little bit um, from Paul Eccentrics, well, I'm going to read, a, talk about his new book, uh, Paul Eccentrics' new book, and uh, I'll find that, the writing for that one. And uh, Louise, do you have something ready to read tonight? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay, so it was written. Okay, so th this is this. I showed you the Edinburgh Fringe in a nutshell, but fantastically, um, you know, Paul Eccentra has a new book launch coming out in October. I'm not sure if it's going to be online or if it's going to be live, but Donna will let us know about that, um, and, I'll, and I'll post it. Um, on our YouTube recording here, all the details about it. But she's given me a little blurb about what's going to happen um, and what the book's about. In June 1980, sorry, in June 1897, and as part of Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee celebrations, her expanding empire lays claim to another territory, the moon. Space Captain Gordon Periwinkle the much vaunted gentleman adventurer and amateur taxidermist becomes the first man to set foot on Earth's only natural satellite, bravely sacrificing his life on a one-way trip into the history books. The world is changed in an instant, the balance of power is shifting in Victoria's favour. War breaks out between Germany and America, the two world powers that had previously been closest to achieving such a feat. This is the story of the good captain's attempt to get home, dodging an array of government assassins and foreign agents along the way, keen to use him for their own propaganda purposes. Yet he thwarts them all, and with the help of his trusty Sherpa, Tiny and the inventor royal, Professor Hamble Blaze manages to cobble together a plot to save both his life and his reputation whilst bolstering the queens and her empires into the bargain. It's Capricorn One in Victorian England, though with tongue set firmly in cheek and with James Brolin's part taken by Rufus Hound as we encounter steam driven hobby horses, industrial strength capitally of ca capable of putting a rocket on the moon, solar powered Prosthetic limbs and Jack the Bleeding Ripper. So I should have actually done it in a, in a Cockney accent or something. <laughs> um, but honestly, please buy the book. And so look out for look out for Paul Eccentric uh, book coming out in October. That was his first one. Um, pleasure. A pleasure, Donna. Hi, hi, Paul. Thank you for letting me read that. Um, and I'd like to please, if you have anything ready to read, Leslie, please. Unmute myself. Do you want me to read first or do Louise want to go first? No? Okay. 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 Um, okay. So um, the publisher, Drake, is, um, has been very generous with me this year. They've included me in three chat books, um, and the latest one is just about to come out. Um, so I thought I would read a few that are, or just, they're very short, that are going to be in there. Um, when I, I was very lucky to get on to Ailsa Craig, which is iconic on the west of Scotland, but it's very difficult to get on to it. There's only, I think, a couple of boats that now allow you to land there. Um, and I, I, I pick up stones everywhere. 
um, and it often leads me in different directions. Another name for Ailsa Craig is called the Fairy Isle. So this is what this is called, the Fairy Isle. Born of fire, cooled by bone cold waters, a palm stone holds the history of this island. I too am sea kissed, a skimming stone, paper thin, eroded by empty words. A breath stone, brittle, porous, holding on to the end of summer. You. Do you want another one? Hello? Sorry? Oh, good Lord. Yes, please. Can, right, sorry, I, I thought I'd cut. It keeps on crashing. Um, oh. My internet at the moment is just really weird. So I've got no picture or anything, but I can hear you. Do you want me to do another yes, one? Yes, please, please do, yeah. Okay. Um, right, sorry. I thought I'd totally it lost you all there just for a wee minute. Um, well, I do one for Blair. Blair likes his historical yes, I do poetry. Yeah, you do. Well, um, I think I may have mentioned before that um, my grandfather was part of the home guard that looked after Hess when he crashed in his plane. Yeah, um, our little village was where he was held. But the thing was, at the time, they didn't really know who he was. They just knew he was a German officer. Uh, so while all this fuss was going on in the back, ground to try and bring somebody from Edinburgh. Um, my father and the local men, can you, it really was Dad's army like, um, mm. held on to Hess in the village hall. So this is called Busby, May 1941. Mm. I watched my grandfather being helped onto the Tweed City. My aunt catching his arm as he falls back, his wee legs swinging out stretching to his full five foot three. This is the man who ran to the window that night, double summertime lighting up the sky at 10, witnessed the low swipe of a German plane overhead, ready for the shout to arms, except the home guard were never armed. Maybe he would have felt the chill, perhaps the thrill, capturing an enemy pilot in a newly sown field. No one recognising the man who was not of this village, not one to walk down Main Street to the Cart Vale by a pint. A stranger sitting calmly on the floor, dusty, dusty from the last village dance, blonde hair bloodied by the late evening sun. While outside, friends and neighbours gathered to catch a glimpse of the traitor, Hess, waiting for the world to arrive. Here you go. Well, so they never quite understood why he did it. There's of lots it, of theories. Yeah, mm. Hitler said he just gone and flipped. They may have been, been ousted from Hitler's inner circle. They might have seeking a mission to try and make peace with Britain. Because mm. it was quite early on in the war. It was 1941, it was you just know. before the invasion of the Soviet Union. Mm. Yeah. yeah. The one theory but, was to um, try and make peace with Britain so they could concentrate and pillage in Russia. But that was... Yeah. Hitler denied that. He just said he was... He'd flipped. Well, they, they just don't know. Um, I don't know if they'll ever know, mm -hmm. but um, it was, it was, I mean, it, he actually was, um, when, when, he, when the plane landed, um, the farmer who was actually in the field at the time actually went up to him with a pitchfork. I mean, it really <laughs> is Dad's <laughs> army. And, <laughs> Cold steel. you know, and thought, what it's am I windy. going to do with this man? You know, I've got, a, I've got a German, you know, <laughs> um, and it, it was, it was just really surreal, um, and you know, you, but, but well, like many men that fought in wars, he never talked about a lot, because um, he was only f one of fourteen survivors in his battalion from the Somme, you know. Oh. So anyway, yes, uh -huh, only fourteen, actually. And there's the the link. I've, I've written about this because he was fourteen when he joined up. He lied. 
Good grief. You lied about his age. Yeah, man, one, of, one of my grandparents, Grandpa Van, he was actually wounded in the Somme. And he spent the rest of the one in German POW camp. Oh. Which, which probably saved him because he's you know, he's better off there. There than in the Somme, yeah, or anywhere else. I think he was well, he was really well treated. I think they were working on a farm some of the time, but they were really well, well treated. The Germans passed on, basically. Well, that's the strange thing that actually evolved in our little village here is that there were a lot of Germans working on the land. I mean, because there was a camp nearby. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the local women married some of the men. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, because I, I asked my mum, you know, you know, what was it like? Were they guarded? And she said, no. You know, they were working and they just kind of socialised, you know. But that was after Hess. That was after. Yeah. There was only one single German POW actually escaped from Britain during the war. <laughs> that was a test of how well they were treated. He managed to get to Canada well, and down to America and rejoined the Luftwaffe, but that was it. Yeah. Anyway, oh, that's, that's a couple of for just now. Digression. That was for you, Blair. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> it was, that was brilliant. Um, Louise, do you have something you can share with us? Yes. Thank you. This is the book. I was telling you about my poetry book from 20 years ago. So I would like to read you a couple of things from that, if I may. If that's please, okay. please, please go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, it's, it's a whole collection about a, a friend of mine who passed away, and it was basically around the story of that. So that's what the, the poems kind of hang on. I'll, I'll read you one and see what you think. This one is called Memories. Someone told me that you'd spent time by the water. There was a trace of doubt, then I remembered. A small girl picking rainbows from an oil slick. That was the dead you, living. Pigtails and runny nose. I lifted you, the child. Held you. A calling, a rush of life. I see it. You were not really gone. Gone from school and walks and duty. Yes, not gone but truly. You asked me where I was going. I answered anywhere you choose. Here I see a harp. That tale for fools and not unique. Look deeper. You plucked one string, then another until they broke. I react impromptu, just the way you choose. There was a light in my eyes which went on and off. Everyone laughed. There was a moment, polished with care, set down to dry, where all hands touched and linked. I laughed, I dived, almost caught you, but didn't see you. Lost my sense of place. You'd gone to the water, and we stood in it, captive, yet drawn along. You were seven years old, and I was five. I followed you through that crescendo of sound, when all was gone, I stood alone in wet space, submerged myself in you, your silence. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm to unmute to tell you how lovely that was. That really was it's lovely. Thank you. Would you like a second one? Yeah, thank Please. you. That was beautiful. Yes. Please, yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, Right. Okay. This one is called Silk and Shadows. Nearly there, I wash my hands and hear your voice appearing too soon. You make my conscience cry. I feel your blood in my veins. You are always here. Don't let me forget you. Under the window, there are bluebells, an ocean of remembrance. I see you walking there, whistling a foreign tune, with laughter in your eyes, nearly there. And I run to greet you and there is nothing. And I fall to the ground and there is nothing but silence and the echo of my voice. Lost in the shadows, I fall in the restless, silky milk of your married face, gleam of your body. 
so. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. You have a wonderful collection there. Wow. Have, have you submitted it? it this year, actually, it's called Jewel Tree. It was a very limited edition, but I'm doing a new edition of it later this year. Good, because it's lovely. It really is. Yeah. Um, and if we do another speakeasy like yes. we did last night, you should actually, you know, join us. Yes, I would like that. And, and read something. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. Um, sorry, I, I'm jumping in too much. Oh, right? no. I, I, you know, you're actually, you're actually taking the words out of my mouth because I was thinking that as well, Leslie, because... Um, the Scottish Writers' Centre, I can't remember if we actually said, the Scottish Writers' Centre, uh, if you, I can, I can send you a link actually um, yeah. to join, because it, in actual fact, it's free membership until October, absolutely free to join. Um, so please, um, Les, Leslie's actually the project manager, um, so she's actually inviting you, so... <laughs> You're getting an invite. <laughs> right, can I just, can I put it on a scale? Right, the last person I gave a personal yes, invite to yes. was Chris Salt, MBE, you know, oh, wow. who appeared last night, right, who appeared last night. <laughs> Actually, um, I did invite Ali Whitelock. She joined us from Australia as well, and Saima Afreen from India. Oh, um, yeah, the, the Indian poets and this, you know, oh. We're just, oh, magical. Um, and uh, Ali was brilliant at the end. I hope, I hope that it's going to go on the, on the website quite soon. We've just it? been, um, yeah, we've been talking about that um, because so many people wanted to see it again. Uh -huh. especially a lot of the writers yeah. um you know, they were contacting family and friends and saying god you've got to see me on this yeah. um but i mean so we're in the process of um maybe making it on youtube permanently mm. we have to get permission from the individual writers mm. for that to happen um and they're all up for it to be perfectly honest and then it'll go onto the website, our website as well. It'll be on our website. With all, do you know how generous they've been? They've actually allowed us to um, put on their writing. Yeah. So it's going to be available. So not only are you going to see them and hear them, you're actually going to be able to read their work as well. Um, they've been incredibly generous. They really have. Um, so publicly, thank you, everybody. And yeah, thank I mean, you. It's, I mean, it's, it was just, daunting it was just I just felt, I felt honoured and I felt privileged uh, to, you know, I, I only had a little minute film, but honestly, to be amongst such beautiful writers, um, and if you have the opportunity, Louise and um, Leslie, as Leslie said, please, um, actually, your voice is really, really lovely, isn't it? Your voice. So you would take a lovely video. You would take a. Have you ever done a film poem before, please? No. <laughs> oh well, Leslie. Listen, Leslie's no, no, I don't. <laughs> yes, I, that, that's my thing, right? But the majority of people that took part last night had never filmed themselves reading. Mm. Um. So it was a big challenge for them. It really was. Um. I mean, they really stepped up to the mark, as a lot of them have said watching everybody else they suddenly thought oh I should really have been doing that or should have been doing that it's a learning process but because we're in a new world where you know to take part in things like this you know often you know you have to film yourself to be perfectly honest or um there's nobody else doing it for you really but um no they were fantastic um and since then I've been caught I have actually been contacted today by lots of people saying can I do no can I do one you know um but to be honest myself and our wonderful film and sound guy Mark Cunningham Mark. we're both exhausted mm -hmm. yeah. this has been a month of really really intense um editing because we wanted everybody's film to shine mm -hmm. so I we mean, did tweaks mm -hmm. yeah I mean, it was, it's, absolutely, it's absolutely exceptional and um, there, there will probably be a one later on in the year. Um, is that right, Leslie? That's what we're planning. Yeah. We're yeah. planning. And we're also hopeful that we might be able to do something for the Paisley Book Festival oh. um, in February as well. Um, so 
yeah, I mean, it's, but what was really good was that was 31 writers. It's really unusual to get 31 international writers mm -hmm. um, in two hours. And I was very strict, only allowed them three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they probably think, you know, oh God, you know, she's terrible, she only allows us. But it just allowed, it was fantastic. You got a snapshot and you went on to another one, another one, another one. Um, you know, sort of, it, it was great. It was really good. Yeah. You, you, but I will try and send you a link. You. It's certainly, a, you know, quality three minutes. So very, you know, very, very, very oh, high uh -huh. quality and uh, wonderful. So, yeah, we'll send you all the links and then please become a member and uh, it, it really, you'll never look back. And, and that includes anybody that's watching this, Scottish Writers' Centre. Yes. Uh -huh. um, please become a member. And, and that, that actually, the subscription is quite nominal. So I, I, I don't know exactly, but it's, you know, around about, what, 20 quid a month, a year? Sorry, 20 um, pounds a year or something? It might even be 15. So yeah. Let's... I mean, I'll say, I'll say a little bit more just in case I've got it wrong, you know. We're so not sure. <laughs> Just the case, but and it's free. It's free just now. It's fantastic. It's free until October, um, and it's so. I have to say, it's my thing. Film. It's so exciting doing it and seeing yourselves and being in an audience um, on on that YouTube. Oh, it's just so exciting. Anyway, stop it, Rose. Stop it. Because I'm still on a high from last night. Blair Thorley, did you enjoy? It? Do you want to oh, speak? Yeah. What, have, have that been? I was going to ask Blair what because. You know, you weren't and you, you didn't know much about the project. Well, I thought it was amazing. Did you enjoy it was, it? it was a nice combination of humorous and serious. It was very well professionally presented as well. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. That's good. Um, I must say that um, my 84-year-old mother insisted she wanted to watch it. She just got a new laptop, you know, and delusion of being you no know, competent on a laptop, which was not the case. But anyway, she... Uh, <laughs> She becomes your armchair critic. Which is quite <laughs> amusing. <laughs> it is really amusing, you know? Oh yes, that one was good. Oh, maybe if they you're in, you just kinda of go, whoa, right. But she loved it. Oh, she boy. absolutely loved it. You know? Oh, she oh, do you know what she also commented on? Um, and again, this is relevant about us putting these events on. She's been isolating now since what, early March. And so she's not to go to anything. And she said that was the first night, you know, of like an entertainment. Yeah. Um, mm. And she's and she phoned me this morning. She said, and I slept all night. So oh, it, she, nice. she just it just changed, you know. And you just think, well, for all those people that can't get out to events, you know, where that is their social life. You know, there's a lot of them. Um, underlying health and well-being, you know, going to events as well, you know, and chatting to people. I think you've got a very good point, Leslie, because it's, because it was interactive as well, you know, yes. for, for the audience that we can make, you know, people can make comments as well. And I guess... Oh, that was wonderful. You know, <laughs> that was... And, and as you say, for people that are, you know, stuck at home, it is lovely to be able to have that opportunity to do that your mental well-being we were talking about that before as well yes you know? and, and it is it's very true um i mean you'll know as well sometimes when we go to especially poetry events i shouldn't really say that events let's say writing okay. events um sometimes the demographic can be towards you know 70s whatever and that might be the night they go out mm -hmm. to listen you know um and because maybe they can't do but you you talked about the chat, um, the continual chat. I thought that was very powerful. We've got very very well known and highly respected writers praising people who was maybe just in a local writing group who'd submitted, and to get praise like that, you know, it must have been absolutely phenomenal, and it was so genuine. You know, um, and without, and exaggeration, I, I like without that. exaggeration, Liz, it actually lasts, lasts a lifetime. Someone that's starting yes. off as a writer that gets a comment, you know, from a professional, you know, well-known, that that boosts you up no mm -hmm. end. One a one-liner comment like that. I mean, I, know. I mean, I was, I, mean, I think I got a compliment from Martin Stepick. You know, I'll keep that forever. <laughs> 
and Tom, Tom, yeah. you know, everybody got compliments or one, at least one or two compliments from each other. And it really was lovely. So lovely. Uh, you know, I was just going to say, using this format, and it is a new format and a new way of doing this, because you could comment in the chat yeah. as somebody was actually reading their work on film, um, you couldn't do that at a live event. No. You couldn't say, oh, I really liked that line, or oh, that really touched me, you know, whatever. You know, you couldn't do that. But these writers have had feedback. That's a and really positive good point. feedback. It's been great. It's been fantastic. It's a really good point because at a live event, it does matter as well if someone comes up and says, I really enjoyed your work, but sometimes they can't get to you for one reason or yeah. another. Whereas it's online, true. everybody has the opportunity to express themselves that way. Honestly, um, it was phenomenal. And uh, I can't wait till the next one. I can't wait to see you, Lise, in the next one. So Absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, this has got on, on YouTube. This has actually been recorded at the moment. So <laughs> you've got all the details. I'm going to be inundated. I'm, I'm, t- I'm going to be inundated again. I know this. Oh, we'll um, do those. We'll put all the details. Do you know, it's lovely. It's genuinely lovely. I mean, it really is. You know, it's genuine. See, aha, uh-huh, and I was going to say that. See, because somebody's filming themselves in their own home. Um, I love that. I'm sorry, I'm kind of nosy. And I liked that, you know, I, I, and that was kind of interesting me as well. But it was also, you know, what does somebody choose to read on film? There's lots of, you know, the psychology behind it I found interesting. You but, liked and, the one, you liked the one, I didn't liked, mind. Yeah. Sorry? Liked, yeah, there was what? a washing machine in the fridge. Who was that? The yes, fridge. I was going to say that in the background. <laughs> People forget there's a background, you know, or it's chucking down rain, or there's traffic going past. They forget that because they're so in the moment. Yeah. But to me, that was bringing a reality to it. I will say that both Mark and myself had to um, do a bit of technical tweaking sometimes to lower the background noise, but um, we wanted yeah, to keep it genuine. I have to say, you did, you did a splendid job with mine because, because of the... We've got a battery that is changing. And, and we can't a smoke alarm and we can't seem to take the smoke alarm. We're not able to do that for someone. We'll need to get somebody in eventually um, for that. But I have to say That was an Mark. easy can I just say that was an easy fix because I don't know whether you realise that subconsciously you were having a pause and when you were pausing I could hear the battery <laughs> going that really high pitched noise in your smoke alarm. So I could cut that out and then you would speak and then you would pause and then you'd hear it again and I could cut that out. So well done to you. <laughs> you did well, it subconsciously. Well, that, that, that's, that was up to I did it, Mark's technical wizardry, you know, you know, cutting out all that background noise, you know. To, to that was the, me. Was it yourself? Oh my gosh, it uh-huh. was you. Between oh, us, God. both of us, we worked oh, so wow. in the films. Uh-huh, wow. yes. Uh-huh. Incredible, honestly. Um, oh, can't wait, as I say, for the next one. And um, that, that maybe, maybe, I don't know, we'll, we'll look out for it. Look out for the news on the website. We'll find out soon when that's going to happen. Now, do you want to read a poem? I'll read a poem if you want. Right, Blair's going to read a wee poem for us, and we're going to sort of finish up around eight. So let's 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 read a poem each, or a couple of poems yeah. each. There you go, Blair. This poem has got a historical theme, so it links into Leslie's earlier poem about the infamous Rudolf Hess. It's actually about uh, it's a famous poem about sullen despair. You think direction. <laughs> The external answer is removed, people are less floundering. It's called Waiting for the Barbarians. You imagine a scenario where the, the Visigoths actually sacked Rome in 410. The Emperor famous Honorius. You can imagine the Emperor and all these Senate waiting for the Barbarians. Here it is. What are we waiting for assembled in the Forum? The Barbarians are due here today. Why isn't anything going on in the Senate? Why are the senators sitting there with the legislating? Because the barbarians are coming today. What's the point of senators making laws now? Once the barbarians are here, they'll do the legislating. Why did the emperor get up so early? 
And why is he sitting enthroned at the city's main gate in state wearing the crown? Because the barbarians are coming today. The emperor's waiting to see their leader. He's even got a scroll to give him, loaded with titles with imposing names. Why have our consuls and traitors come out today wearing their embroidered, their scarlet togas? Why have they put on bracelet to so many amethysts, rings sparkling with magnificent emeralds? Why are they carrying elegant canes, beautifully worked in silver and gold? Because the barbarians are coming today. And things like that dazzled barbarians. Why don't our distinguished orators turn up as usual and make their speeches? See what we have to say, because the barbarians are coming today and they're bored by rhetoric and public speaking. Why the sudden bewilderment, this confusion? How serious people's faces have become. Why are the streets and squares emptying so rapidly? Everyone's going home lost in thought because night has fallen and the barbarians haven't come. And some of our men have just in from the border say there are no barbarians any longer. Now what's going to happen to us without barbarians? These people were a kind of solution. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. Thanks Blair, that was brilliant. Thank you so much. Right. Enjoyed that. Um, what I'm going to read um, now is actually um, a, the dovetails, um, a kind of stupidity. Now, that, uh, that Leslie is the book that we saw at the Edmonton National Book Festival, wasn't it? Yeah, oh. but uh -huh, um, it was this being sold, it was published by Vagabond and yeah. um, it was just flying off their shelves inside mm -hmm. the book tent um, and I happened to be about and a few folk were asking to sign it so we kind of slipped into the author's signing <laughs> table in the tent we're naughty yeah, but uh, anyway um, it is it was, it was sold out you should maybe explain what it is yeah, well, I'm just going to read a little bit about dovetails. I absolutely love dovetails because um, very, very, it's, a, it's a peace organisation. Uh, the Dovetails Peace Charity was actually formed in Scotland in 2017 as a response to the growing instability of a world where established institutions were being driven apart, where politicians were using their people as pawns in a game of self aggravation and where the gap between rich and poor was greater than it had ever been. Our aim is to use the power of art to question the military of our culture and to oppose the devastation caused by the arms trade. The work in this anthology, A Kind of Stupidity, comes from poets, storytellers and non-fiction writers and ranges from the recorded past to the imagined future, from Northern Ireland to Palestine to the Yemen. It interrogates history and by questioning, challenging and bearing witness to war, it tries to play a small part in reshaping it. So I thought it was best to read from the back of the, yeah. So there's a lot of um, events also coming up in dovetails. Um, they also have a website uh, exciting actually uh, events they, they have um, there too and um, they also perhaps might have a, an event at the Scottish Writers Centre around about the end of the year um, and Jean Rafferty is the one um, she's actually the director of, of, uh, of Dovetails. Um, I want to read please um, the first poem I wrote in the, for this book um, and it was called a flight for peace. If we had the chance to change the world we had last year, restore moments of glory, wipe away insane war and poverty, would we wipe away humankind as we know it now here in our lives? Bitter and sweet lives intertwined, cruelty and kindness chosen. Please help promote peaceful distribution. 
but there is no time for hopeless retribution. Mandela, well, he saw a very different path. He saw man and woman as diverse, passionate of mind, heart and soul. Please stop for people and animals in need. Small sacrifices together we can all make. Fight for peace in all of our lives. Just as the white dove takes flight, because we can also be beautiful and free. And that's that was my contribution, but there's just, um, thank you, there's amazing, uh, you know, we're speaking about Chris Saltz is in this book. Um, I, um, so many, honestly, um, there's major writers in yeah. there. There's, Ellen Mac which is made, why it was selling so fast, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris Salt is, is here. Uh, Catherine Metcalf, brilliant poet as well. Um, you know, Vivian Jones. I recognise a lot of the names. So anyway, this was a memory of us um, at the Edinburgh International Book Festival. Um, I think it was 2018, actually, this was. So yeah no. by vagabond so, um. I had a lovely memory actually the following year um I won the Edinburgh International Book Festival mem um, memoir prize um oh, I so never said yeah. that. I, don't oh, know. I keep these what? shucks anyway I um I was invited along and Damien Barr the author oh, yes, Damien yes, Barr, I, do, yes. um, I was chatting to him and yeah. it was him that encouraged me to um, write my memoir. Um, and it also kind of led to me going to Stirling University and doing a master's last year. It was him. Oh, it's wow. his, and he kind of supported me via Twitter, you know, through the year when it was really tough to write. Mm. Um, and he just kept me going. He was wonderful. But anyway, yeah, yes, amazing. so that's why I'm kind of fond of we the, saw him the in festival. We saw him in Helensburg. Mm. Fancy. Yes, Remember, absolutely. He's stage in Helensburg. Oh, he's, he's great. He gives so much inspiration, doesn't he, Damien Barr? He's a lovely person. He really is. We'll need a to wonderful get him writer. On. We'll, we'll need to get him on um, um, filming. He'd be good. <laughs> I did actually. I, by that time, it was getting so many people. I would have actually contacted him. Um, Louise, he's based down in Brighton, um, Damien Barr, and he's an author and it's well worth you know, seeking out his work. It's very good. Yeah, we love you, Damien. Please uh, yeah, we do. Want to see you on the film. <laughs> now, Louise, do you have any poems, any poem, other poems you want to share from your book? Yeah. Yep, okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I'll find a shorter one. Um, it doesn't matter how long they are, they're lovely. Okay, I'll try one that's a little bit different then. Okay, this is called The Concise History of PMT, from the same book. It's not very concise, but let's see. The garden was green, tall trees, damp grass, scented, innocent. Adam was on one of his walks, communing with nature. The sky buckled in blue, Eve was bored. The apple jiggled and giggled on the branch. She coyly washed, a Diet Coke moment. Tart and bitter to the bite, Eve retched at the pain in her belly. Four angels plopped in descent from the sky. Gabriel, the understanding one, with his herbal teas and hot water bottles, hot from his burgeon seeking. Raphael, the tetchy one, given to revelations, misplaced sympathy at inopportune moments. Michael, the stupid one, given to lewd jokes with li tight lips like wire and piggy little eyes. Eve rose from the ground, knees stained with mud. Armisale, girl angel, goddess of the cycle, stood, shook her book of rules, cover pitted by the sun and the anger of furies, blood stained by many battles. Thou shalt be snappy and irritable for four decades for your disrespect to the Lord, so it is written. Yea, thou shalt cry for no reason, and like romantic melodrama, thou shalt be given to rages, impatience, and bad hair days. Adam will go on walks as far as his legs can take him, 
you will make his life miserable and love him the more. For the Lord does not take away the fundamental desire, but rather makes it grow. And thou shalt quit Eden, and put on clothes with double gusset, and thou shalt worship the goddess Lilith. Gabriel thought fast. How could he find a mother for the Christ child out of such women? Raphael played with the serpent and idly contemplated his memoirs, while Michael guffawed. Eve was bored. Armisale closed her book. Go, leave this place with your man by your side. I do not heap curses on your head. I am here to make women strong. Thou shalt do much and conquer, and lead the world by proxy, for your curse will make a child. Then Adam entered the garden, naked, a spade slung over his shoulder. As the angels spun into air, Eve put on her best smile. I've missed you, darling. You look so hungry. Do take a bite. I really enjoyed that. Do you know, Rose, is that not a wee bit like a fierce woman poem? <laughs> because, I mean, genuinely, we um, we always say, you know, you speak your truth your way, you know, and there should be no censorship. No topic should be, you know, sort of um, censored at all. I really like that. So well done. I like that. I like that. I really Good enjoyed one. that. Honestly, Lise, thank you so much for sharing your work. Um, can't wait to hear you again. Um, and it's, it's, we're, we're here every Wednesday at 7, so if you want to pop in at any time, please do. Um, and that's what we do. We mm -hmm. just kind of read and, yeah. and, and chat and stuff. So um, talking about women with fierce words, I just wanted to, to actually show you Jean Rafferty's book as well, The Four Marys, which is brilliant. I just wanted to mention Jean Rafferty. Uh, a wonderful writer, a wonderful person, um, and that's another book that I bought from the, you know, the Edmund International Book Festival. Right. But I'd just like to finish off, if, if I may, where we talk, talked at the beginning about um, women with various words. So, um, if, 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 if with your permit, if I could just maybe read my poem that I did in the Women with Various Words, and if I had the honour of Leslie reading the, the Thrawn poem at the end, that would just I was going to say that would just make my couple of days. <laughs> it's not the weekend, you know, yesterday and today. So that would just finish off this session beautifully. Um, so um, I'll read. And then what happened was Leslie asked each of us to write, um, you know, think about at the bottom of the page about the event, to write about the, which is a really nice touch actually. You know, to write about the 2016 event out of the Scottish Poetry Library. For example, we have Catherine McFarlane. You know, she wrote at the bottom of her page, the event was the start of a community, a supportive, inspiring, life-changing community. That's what good art and great people can do. That's what Catherine wrote then. And she wrote her... I, I'm not going to read... I hope one day Catherine... I mean, I, I mean, she kept, came on here. See if anybody... Can, I would just... Oh, I'll be so happy. Um, but I'll read mine uh, at the moment. I'll just find my page. And uh, I'm just going past cock a doodle do Barred Wire with Emma Mooney. And uh, Breaking Through Gravel by Elizabeth Rimmer. I've come to me. <laughs> yeah. So and that was my photo then. And um, this will finish it off really lovely because... Um, it's going to be September next week, isn't it? When is September? Next week. Yeah, so this will be the last week of August. So I chose Mirror. And what I, what, when Leslie asked us to describe what it felt like being together outside the Scottish Poetry Library in 2016, I said, it felt so fabulous being together with women that had words in their mouths to express. We did so in voice and action outside the Scottish Poetry Library and forever we will be totally thrown. And you'll see why I said that in a moment or two. Um, now, my one is called Mirror Mirror. So here we go. Mirror Mirror upon the wall, now you lie upon the floor. And how can I justify such havoc as I walk around my maze? Come, 
Look into my hazy window pane. There you will find glass, some so tiny in size, small little pieces of sharp edge art, a newly formed jigsaw of different shapes. But only just minutes ago, there was one giant mirror reflecting images of rainbows. Oh, you are so very vain. You even dish out the blame. And I thought she was my mate. But you threw the weights so I with your shouting denials, cracked up maniac. You shattered our dreams. And the torn love letters I found, they were not mine. They strewn upon the white marble floor, mingling with our inventive mess. Seconds add up, and green-eyed monsters kill, and trust is dust. It is time, though, to pick up the tiny little pieces. And in time, I hope, pick up separately our shattered lives. Well done. I can remember each one of you performing outside on the street. I think that was what was so powerful. And people stopping to listen to, you know, what, 15 women? I mean, it was kind of unheard of, you know, in the Edinburgh Fringe. Um, and I should also say, Louise, I didn't know a lot of these women. I had put a call out to come and, you know, actually speak your words out there in a public space, mm. you know, without censorship. So I, randomly, I mean, I knew Rose from before, but the majority I didn't. But... From that moment, um, some, we've just, we're now a collective and we have opened festivals, we've published, we sold out this anthology twice, we've done national radio. I mean, it's kind of gone a bit crazy because I think we captured something with women and what I love is going into communities and running workshops, you know, and really empowering women to have a voice um, and saying, yes, you no, know, what you're saying is valid, you know, write the way you want to write. Um, so anyway, you can tell I can get a bit passionate about this, but um, which then leads me to... Yay. Thrawn. Right, I should maybe explain, Louise, right? Thrawn is a Scottish word, and it really means stubborn, oh. right? And it's, it's used as a derogatory term against women you know it's like oh she's a thrown bitch right and it really and, and that's it so I kind of um owned the word I mm. said yeah I am yes and I won't put up with anything so this is why this is called thrown and it's because I've heard really strangely enough um I heard of I didn't hear it but um there was a rally there was a big feminist rally and a young girl got up and actually read this in front of the rally. I just thought, good on you, darling. Right, anyway, this is called Thrawn. I am a dangerous woman with words that are fierce, can pierce, punch through barriers some would place in my path. They can reduce others to tears, highlight fears that only a woman would know. I am a dangerous woman. I have a voice and it will sing. It will ring with a tr truth. And when my words are hoarse and bloodied from the battlefield, my fierce words will lift me and place me back on my true course. But this voice can soothe, embrace you in words that keep the weeping at bay, support you hold you until the day your own fierce words form in your mouth and you stand in this place and are free to have your say. There you go. <laughs> so um, those normally when we have events now, the whole collective do different lines. Um, and it becomes a very much a performance piece. 
uh, about and you know and we invite the woman to come up with this empowering word their fierce word and to write it on a canvas every event we do we invite the audience to write their fierce word onto a canvas mm. and it's very powerful for them um you know they've got to think about that word and they're writing it and we get them to put their signature next to it mm. um, and sometimes when we run work writing workshops they ask to keep it so they can write you they're going to use it as you know as a writing tool but it's it's our little signature thing that we do because we we know how powerful it is um i've used it with school children and, and that has been amazing you know um a school actually took it on and instead of a canvas they generated a big space there yeah, there's one right uh -huh, in a hall um, and children were allowed to write a fierce word on it. Is you got one, Rose? She's she's muted. I've just seen. Normally, you know, I don't can't believe you. Can you see the different ones? I but, love looking for the words. Well, there's there's um, integrity, uh, Highland dancer, liberty, sharing. That's great. How did you get that? Is so that that's from, from that's, that's uh, Craig from, Miller? That's, that's, Lisa, that's from the Craig Miller event. Do you remember the Craig Miller? Oh, that's what it's from. That was World Craig Community Miller. Arts Day. We opened World Community Arts Day in Edinburgh. There's um, Rita Brad. Rita Brad's put something there as well. She's yeah. an amazing author. Actually, Rita's that's put great. release. That's an interesting one. I always find it interesting. And then Carla's one. She's put in uh, energy. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes um, I like to watch people when they're signing because they own the canvas. Sometimes they lift it off and put it on the floor. They oh, really, oh. I can see them really thinking about yeah. it, you know. Integrity there, show them, yep. Yeah. So that's the one um, from Craig Miller Library when we did it to the World Community Arts Day. Women with Fierce Words, um, were actually features at that, that event as well. And they all wrote, as well as the performers, including Highland Dancers. You can see Highland Dancers at the top. There's actually mm -hmm. Highland da Dancers there, so. Oh, that's right. There was a whole load of Highland Dancers, yeah. the little girls, that's right. They so, signed it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> actually, I have all the other canvases. I keep them because I want to exhibit them. Well, I'll um, give you this back when I, whenever we get to, to meet each other. I'll give I know. You this one, uh, because that's a really special one, again, from the World uh, Community Arts. And the thing is, you know, it's like, a, it's like a memory as well. This canvas is like a memory of that day as well. Yeah. So, they're all quite, they're all very unique. Um, yeah. And don't think it's just women that we invite to sign and the canvases um, power, a lot power of there, yeah. the men and the men enjoy you not know, actually signing it as well um and jennifer harley's wrote persevere jennifer harley that's right she i remember that day um because she couldn't make it but she said please write a word because that's my writing and she told that's me right. to write that word up uh, leslie persevere so really interesting <laughs> But I, hope, it's, I hope that one day on online, perhaps um, we could have a woman with fierce words event again, and uh, you know, because um, that would be amazing. I'm it? always a woman with a cunning plan. <laughs> I, I just, I, I knew, you know I, this. I say that. I knew. She knows this. You see, she gives me little ideas, and then they kind of go <laughs> supersonic, like what we did last night. You know. Uh, that kind of went crazy and a bit international, whereas I think it was supposed to be quite low key. Um, I think initially you only wanted something like 10 folk, I get 31, you know. Exactly. Um, oh my God. But, but I know that, I know, I know that Les's creative mind, as soon as she sees that and talks about it, something's going to happen, magical's going to happen without exaggeration. Something magical. Um, I'd just like to thank you so much for tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it, Elise. It was lovely meeting you, Be listening to your beautiful, beautiful poetry. You enjoyed that, Blair, yeah? Oh, yeah, very really, much so. Really, very much so. Um, and I hope, um, I don't know if I have your email, I must have your email address, but please, um, we'll put the details underneath uh, this YouTube uh, 
or I'll, I'll put up online um, the details about what we spoke about the Scottish Writers Centre, uh, because with that, you know, we'll, we'll be in touch with regards to the film poetry as well. So, Leslie, thank, thank you, you very much. Oh, thanks so much. Very welcome. And Blair, well, and you will find. I was going to say Facebook for women with fierce words. You'll oh, find yeah, us right. exactly. Face, women with sorry, women with fierce words. I can see Louise writing it down because I'm giving her too much information. <laughs> yeah, but find us on Facebook. Yeah. But honestly, Louise, you'll never look back. It's a lovely community we have. I, and thank you for for joining us from London. We're delighted, honestly. What's the weather like there in London? It's still raining, or is it? Um, no, it's quite windy, but it's 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 not it's not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. Not really. Did oh, you know? It's never stopped, has it? No, oh, Louise. Chris Salt joined us from London last night. Yeah. She's got. She was down there. Yeah. Oh, this is this is what we love. I mean, it's just uh, all of us from all over the world can join here. Mm -hmm. At least there's something about this pandemic that's positive. That we, you know, I must admit, really. Um, Blair, do you want to uh, say a few words about? joining us next week or anything you want to say? Yeah, just thank you all for coming along and really enjoyed your, really enjoyed your contributions and hopefully see you next week. And your highlight of course was the history poem, no doubt. Oh, real, uh, real, real history poem, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you get, yeah, oh, what, you'll find it in the what, new chat book and I don't, think, know it. I don't think there's a poem in the world about real history apart from that one. Oh my god! There you oh go. Well get a copy of get a copy of the chat book and you can read it. Uh, just a just a thought I had, just a thought I had. Oh my god! That's another thing we need to get some sort of link to, to buy books as well. You know, we'll have to sort that out at some point. But um but meanwhile, as we are away um dream dreaming and thinking about creative uh, other uh, creative amazing events. I bid you uh, good night and um, I hope to see you next Wednesday at seven o'clock. Thank you so much. Night night. Bye, -bye. Bye, Bye. Louise. Bye. Bye. Bye.